Ubiquity just announced three new products today, and I have to say I'm very excited for these. Not only because they're 5G related, but because of the amount of use that I've put in on the UMR industrials and the 4G stuff, I'm finally excited that Ubiquity is getting into the 5G market. It's come up with some pretty competitive products. So let's dive into their new product releases and let's take a look. Now let's take a look at the first product released, and this is the one that's available today for purchase, so check the link in the description. This is the U5G Max, and this is $399 for purchase, available today, the day of the announcement, so I would go ahead and check that out before I get sold out if you're really interested in the 5G. The other two announcements are the U5G Max Outdoor, which is... Uh, in that sub $500 range, it looks like the announcement for when it's going to be released is a little bit later. And then the UDR 5G Max, which will be released next year at some point. And that also looks like in that, that's in like that sub $600 range. So all in all, three really competitively priced 5G products. One a full on gateway, right? And the other two, just their 5G actual SIM compatible uh, antenna and, and what's really cool about the U5Gs is from what it looks like you can actually plug in via any PoE switch to power it and it will kind of automatically understand that that could be a potential WAN sort of how we used to have the ULTE in a way um, how that kind of just used to work automatically it seems like the U5G will have the same features and availabilities. Something nice, something really cool. You could plug it in at any point in your network and just kind of reroute traffic through it. It's really nice in case you got a switch that's closer to the outdoors. It might be more convenient to route it out there instead of having to physically bring it into the WAN port. So that's really cool. That That's an awesome update. Again, we love the ULTE. We have it in a lot of our client sites. It's just kind of that, you know, tertiary, if you ever need it, kind of internet connection. Hopefully you never need it, but you have it. So that's a really cool feature that's coming with these. So let's get into like what actually is the Unify 5G Max. That is a high performance 5G modem designed to enhance any Unify cloud gateway or gateway with similar cellular connectivity. Uh, it supports dual SIM, so that's awesome, and a secondary physical or an eSIM uh, port or logically eSIM, uh, enabling seamless failover for your critical applications. So this is a huge feature request that we've talked about and, and been very outspoken about, right, is we need 5G, we need diversity at the actual edge, right? And from my understanding is the two carriers that are supported right now is going to be AT&T and T-Mobile are like available at launch, but then Verizon is coming soon. So uh, that'll be, you know, hopefully supported at some point in the very near future. But uh, we use AT&T for most of our connectivity down here for all the critical infrastructure. So that's fine for us. So eventually they'll have all three of the big carriers. But uh, that's awesome to hear that this product is not locked. So it's kind of like the UMR industrial. I know the ULTE was carrier locked with just AT&T at the beginning. Um, so, and then the UMR industrial, they just had it completely factory unlocked. So it's great to see that they're continuing this pattern through these products and adding more, uh, circuits of diversity or paths of diversity for your connectivity. And before we get into the tech specs for this, it does look like the Unify 5G, uh, Max is only compatible with the Ubiquiti ecosystem. It is not a standalone product, which is very unfortunate for, uh, what we were hoping, but I think it's a stepping stone. And what do I mean by that? Well, this is kind of, it's seeming more and more like with this release is really the refresh of the ULTE, kind of that extension of your WAN. Um, I hope that they take this technology and bring it to the UMR industrial lineup because that's where a lot of the clients that we have like having a physically standalone device whether it goes in a fire truck or a cop car or something like that, that they can actually have on board. So it sucks that we are not seeing it in this release, but I'm hoping that it will come out in the future. But that is something to know about the 5G Max and um, the difference between that and the UMR series is this actually has to be adopted 
by the Ubiquiti ecosystem. But again, that enables it so you can plug it in at any point in your network and use it as the actual WAN. So you get that benefit if you already have an existing Unify network. I'd say this is a no-brainer, right? Like easily go out, upgrade, get it. Um, obviously you can't use it. Unfortunately, if you don't have a Unify head, at least at the head end of your network, um, I'm assuming you would probably realistically benefit from just having a full Unify stack for this type of product. So again, a little unfortunate, but a trade-off, but let's get into the actual specs of what the Unify 5G Max and the Max Outdoor actually have on board. So if we take a look at the... Uh, 5G Max, the non-outdoor version, we get a 2.5 gigabit PoE RJ45 port to power it in. We get one nano SIM slot on the top part, and we get one nano SIM slot on the bottom, or an eSIM, that secondary port. Again, you can use two physical nanos or one nano and one eSIM in there. Uh, you have the 1.3 touch screen on the front to see all of your analytics and stuff like that. And it looks like that there is no secondary on the RJ45. Again, it is that one input. But again, since it's not that UMR industrial type, you only really need one because you can't really do anything aside from use it for a WAN specifically. So as far as the carriers, again, we talked that you will have AT&T and T-Mobile up front with Verizon coming soon. Uh, the category for this one, of course, is using 5G and R. So uh, you can also use this with 4G. It is backwards compatible with 4G LTE or 5G. So if you don't actually have 5G yet, whether you're, it's not available in your area, you can still use this. And then eventually when 5G comes out or you switch to it, it'll just start working. So it'll work with both. It's backwards compatible uh, with both of those. So the peak data speeds, it looks like for the 5G uh, NSA will be 3.4 <laughs> gigabits download and an upload of around 560 megs. And then for the 5G SA, it'll be 1.8 gig with around 650 on the uplink. And then going down to 4G, you get 1.6 gig with the 210 megs up. So all of the antennas for this are fully embedded. There's four cellular embedded antennas. And as far as the operating temperature of this, you have, you know, operating humidity of five to 95% non condensing. And you have the zero to 45 degrees Celsius for us American folks. That's 32 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is going to be, you can put it in some places where it's going to get hot or cold, but it's meant to have some protection around it. it this one is not the outdoor version. So you could probably get away with putting it somewhere that's less than ideal, but again, I would highly recommend against it for this model specifically. So let's hop into what the outdoor model specs are. So the 5G Max Outdoor has a little bit different specs than just the regular 5G Max. This one has a full IPX6 weatherproof rating and an IP67 with the cable gland kit in it. So this is a fully outdoor grade mountable device. So I would highly recommend if you are planning on putting this outside, which... A lot of you probably are due to the fact that it is cellular based. You might want to get it in the best place possible. I feel like a lot of people are probably going to be gravitating more towards this product than the other one, unless you get really great coverage in a decent spot indoors and you can kind of safely protect it. But again, this is, this has similar specs. It has one, two and a half gig POE RJ45 port for the input, for the power, as well as there's actually no touchscreen on this one. So this one is just a regular uh, thin matte faceplate. There's just the Ubiquiti logo and a status uh, light. There's no there's no actual LED screen or um, LCM screen or anything like that. Obviously, it's going to be outdoors, so probably won't be looking at it anyways, and it would probably be, it's probably better if that doesn't get ruined, so making it one actually, like, thermoformed piece of plastic is probably a little bit better. Um, you can pull mount it, you can wall mount it, um, that's included in the actual kit, so you still get the one nano sim and the one nano sim plus eSIM or, or eSIM, so again, that's the one nano sim or the eSIM or nano sim, so you can only run uh, one of those or both of those at the same time. Same as the other one. Again, still 5G and R. It, uh, it does 4G LTE. This one actually shows that it can do 3G U UMTS. So that's uh, 
way legacy compatibility. So this thing looks like it has even more compatibility. It actually also has the uh, embedded cellular antennas like the previous one, but this one actually has six. So I'm curious if we get any additional throughput. It looks relatively similar. I'm assuming that might be for potentially added redundancy or better overall spatial coverage for acquiring that signal. So again, everything else is pretty much similar. The ambient operating temperatures for this one are a lot different. It's negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 149. That's negative 40 to 60 C. So you get a lot more out of your operating range for this one, of course, because it's the outdoor version. So that's the one I'm going to probably gravitate to and be probably most excited to have for my setup and a lot of the other setups that we do have. And there's one more product that I don't know. I'm curious your guys' opinions. Let's, let's get into it. This is the Dream Router 5G Max. And I got to say for everything that you can do with it, it's kind of a beast actually it kind of looks like a uh udr but kind of like you know the old like how it was like the dream machine uh router kind of the orb looking one it looks like that but it's on crack right like this thing is crazy this thing can do network protect access talk and connect all in one device obviously the amount of cameras you can have is 5 hd 22k and then 1 4k so it's obviously not going to be something crazy but if you're looking for something that packs a punch and is an all-in-one and can do 5G, this is a pretty interesting device. So more on the specs of it, obviously we have the three 2.5 gig RJ45 LAN ports. We have one 2.5 uh, gig RJ45 WAN port. I'm assuming they're semi-remappable on that. Of course, typical Ubiquiti fashion, they probably are. And then you also have <laughs> you also have a 10 gig SFP WAN port. Again, I'm assuming most of those are remappable, um, but we'll have to kind of find out sooner. I'm not too sure on that. And then you have the nano SIM and then the nano SIM or eSIM option. So again, regular SIM, or you can have that backup where it's a nano or eSIM. So again, you get a lot of diversity as far as this goes, right? You can have a SIM, you can have an eSIM, you can have a physical WAN. I mean, this thing can take all different types of circuits or paths. So if you have like a small a uh, really small branch office or something like that that just needs ultimate connectivity or uptime. Now, this thing's a beast. Like, this thing's crazy. So the simultaneous users for this is 300 plus. So again, I wouldn't recommend going past 80% of that. So nearing that 250 to 270-ish users, I'd probably say that's its actual max. Again, no testing behind that, but I don't like pushing things to like hundred percent all the time. So we already talked about the ports. This thing has 2.3 gigabits per second IDS IPS throughput. So you get a lot, a lot of bang for the buck. Uh, it's a full stateful firewall. It's got all the layer seven application security features that you would expect from one of the big boys. So it's, it's got everything that, um, our true kind of enterprise firewall has in it, but in a way more compact sort of platform. Uh, again, this really reminds me of something that would be good for like a branch office that's only got, you know, 30, 40, 50 people at it potentially and doesn't need anything super crazy. Maybe you'll throw a camera or two at it or connect a door access control or whatnot. So again, it, it just, it just packs a bunch. There also is a micro SD expansion slot, and then you have the power input as well as the reset button at the bottom of it. As far as the integrated Wi-Fi in this thing, you get full 6 gigahertz at 5.7 gig gigabits per second throughput. So that's that's crazy. You get a built-in AP running full 6 gigahertz. So um, it's got MIMO. It's got you know two by two uh, U UM MIMO. So or MU MIMO. So it's got you know. It's got, it's got the throughput you're going to need for it. It's got a great AP built into it. So um, there, it doesn't seem like there's any PoE support on it. Oh, actually, I stand corrected. It, I think it actually does have a PoE port or two on it. There's a, um, 
a PoE budget on it, so it, I mean it's relatively small, so I wouldn't expect to pow power much off of it. But it's got a pre-installed 64 gig uh, micro SD card for the NVR. Of course, you guys can upgrade that and expand that to however much you need. As far as the power method, it's just a DC jack with 54 volt, so it's gonna have like a little DC brick on it. You just plug it in, and you're good to go. And again, for the cellular, you get the 5G and R, so you can get all that great throughput with 5G, you know, that multi gigabit per second. Uh, you also have the 4G and then you have 3G, of course, if, you know, you have that in your area still. So again, this thing is a very interesting product. I can see it being used in just such a variety of environments. So I'm curious whether you guys think that this product is something that you might use, something you might not use. I know I'm particularly excited about a lot of the 5G stuff just because of the capability of the throughput that that brings to some of these really weird edge scenarios with WANs, just kind of, you know, failover capabilities. I really like the 5G stuff because it provides a really solid pipe to actually fail stuff over to. Again, you know, we were failing stuff over to 4G and it could barely hold up. So very excited about this. A lot of cool and interesting products. So again, check the description for the uh, 5G Max that you guys can get today. And yeah, let me know how you guys feel in the comments. I'm curious to see how this release is going to pan out.